Janetta, and I'm Janetta today because we are at John and Susan's house, <laughs> my good buddies, and John's the only person on the planet that calls me that, and I kind of like it, so that's who I am today. John uh, and Susan have a really fabulous garden, and people always comment when they walk by that, uh, you know, it's new. There's something new every week. How do you do that, guys? <laughs> A lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that, but there's got to be some secrets. Ah, well, we have a spring garden with a lot of bulbs, and then when they all finish, we got to clear all those out, and then we have a greenhouse full of plants that we bring out in the spring and get them potted up and put them out in the garden. So we're always some that are not winter hardy. Yeah, so okay. we're always busy with that, and John's got some of his cactus yeah. here that are winter hardy, and then these ones. We keep in our sunroom over the winter, and these ones here stay out. All of these, all, all of these are winter hardy. Oh wow! All the way down to here, and even a couple in there are winter hardy too. But you oh. have a rain cover too. But I do put a rain cover oh, on there, right. just to uh, keep it dry in the winter, because a lot of these cactus can tolerate a lot harsher climates than we have, but they can't tolerate being wet. Oh. So the one's flowering up there. Yeah, and we've got a sequence of flowers. That's uh, one of the last ones of the season. But actually, there's more coming out. Oh, yeah. Um, different cactus bloom at different times, and some of these down here do as well. Wow. How many different kinds do you have? Do you have a count on that? No. No. But you belong to the Cactus Club, right? So. Uh, not anymore. Not, not for anymore? a few years. I still, oh. I still follow it, but, yeah. but no, I haven't uh, been active for a while. Nice. Tell us about these unusual-looking things down here. Well, they're not at their prime anymore. These are all carnivorous plants. There's a, a variety of pitcher plants, uh, and uh, all of them eat insects. Huh. And uh, there's some Venus flytraps down in here, and, and some what are called paniculata, which have sticky surfaces on them. And there's uh, sundews in here as well. And all of them have different methods of uh, capturing and digesting bugs. Fun. That's really cool. Neat. Now well, these are a plant that I should say too that sorry? you never never fertilize ever oh. because they live in a very uh, environment devoid of nutrients right and so that's where they get their uh, nutrition from you have to take those in as nope. well these nope, are hardy they can stay out wow yep. you w I wouldn't have thought that there's a bug there climbing around on one of them your your minutes are numbered there pal <laughs> <laughs> yeah fortunately some of these f are, have like I say they've, they've to be. done their purpose for the season and and uh, there's new new ones coming up but yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah so neat great well how about if we go over there and have a look at what's happening over there so this is a fuchsia boliviensis and it's a non hardy one it's a it's a truly tropical so it's one of the ones that goes in the greenhouse in the winter and uh, it's really best viewed from below uh, there's two of them here one that's more red than this one and uh, like all fuchsias, they're hummingbird favorites. Mm -hmm. And I should say say that this garden has lots for butterflies and hummingbirds at all times, even in the winter. Um, we have active feeders here, and uh, uh, in the winter we have, you know, sometimes 30 or 40 hummingbirds at a feeder at a time. But in the summer, that number drops way down because they're active out in the garden. There's lots to lots to choose from. Yeah. So I have to look at the tag to remember what this one is, but it's uh, this is from uh, Easter Island, I think, and uh, it was down to only three plants left in the world. Oh. And it's a big uh, daisy relative, so later in the fall it'll have, it'll be quite big and it'll have hanging orange daisy lake flowers. Hmm. Um, so it's really starting to grow actively right now, and uh, we'll see what it does. That's very interesting. Anyway. Weeds, not not what you would think of when you think of a daisy. No. Yeah. No, but that's a, a big family, right? Right. Yeah. Anyway. And hydrangea too. Yeah, we have a variety of hydrangeas. Gorgeous um, color. Different colors. And uh, more all the time. Yeah. Uh, this variegated regalia is one of our favorites. It. Uh, it's all done now, but it has nice pale pink flowers. A wigilia. Mm -hmm. Isn't this a wigilia? The Virginia. 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 Yeah. yeah, I don't like those. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, one of my crazy experiments that I've done the last few years. I oh, plant yeah. the black eyed Susans in a pot and then I weave them up through the rosemary. Ah, very just nice. Just to uh, 
give it some flour when it's kind of finished flowering and looks kind of boring. Well, you got to have your namesake in there somewhere. Yeah. What you got back there? This. Well, that's pretty cool. I was thinking the, the purple. Yeah, it looks like potatoes to me. So you're right. It's a solanum. <laughs> it's the same family as potatoes and tomatoes, oh. and that's a, called a potato vine. Ah. Uh, there's two different varieties. This is the uh, non-invasive kind. Uh, it does spread a little bit, but mm -hmm. we've had it for many, many years, and and uh, it takes harsh pruning and keeps coming back and smiling. It flowers all summer and into the wow. fall. If you yeah. just keep cutting it back, it keeps coming. That's beautiful. And then you've got the hardy mandevilla back there too. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about that. And then the porcelain vine up there, which in the f winter has, uh, that's the variegated leaves. Oh yeah. Has beautiful little uh, turquoise berries. Almost teal colored yeah. berries. They vary really from purple beautiful. to teal. So this year it's got so many, I think it's going to be spectacular this fall. Nice. But it's starting to really grow and Susan discovered some babies down here. Nice. That we've never had before. Oh, well, we'll be begging for those later. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a hardy mandevilla. Uh, we're familiar with uh, tropical ones we see in, in the grocery stores and nurseries. They're usually a red or pink color. Uh, most of them are very tropical, not hardy at all. This one is, and it's been here for a few years now and starting to really take off. So. It's starting to flower more and more prolifically, and through the summer it'll be covered in flowers. Beautiful. So, not a well-known plant at all. So we have a lot of pots in our garden for different reasons. As John mentioned earlier, we, we put a lot of sort of more tender plants in our greenhouse, then we bring them out in the spring, but we also don't have great soil, and we found out that some of the plants we like don't do so well in the ground, so we put them in a pot. And sometimes we just uh, have started ones and we've got extra ones and I just put them in the garden because they might as well be flowering in the garden till they find their new home. So I also try to, during the summer, put things that are flowering in spaces that are looking kind of boring. So that's kind of how I try to keep my summer color going with um, the different, different flowering uh, pots that we have. Yeah, it's very nice. See, so you have a fire euphorbia there. Yeah. Fire glow, yeah. Beautiful. And we've got a lantana that we've had for years that we've wintered over. Um, the pink and yellow one there. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's really And pretty. that's the tropical mandevillas in that. Uh, where the, oh, uh, let's go have a closer look. So those ones are yellow and pink, I think. <laughs> so we talked about the hardy mandevilla. These are the tropical varieties that are not hardy. Today, the yellow ones are out. The white ones are not, uh, but and the red ones are about to come out. And they're uh, kind of a dark maroon red, but uh, once this covers this whole thing, it'll be a variety of colors. But that will have to go in the house or in the greenhouse for the winter, because uh -huh. it won't it won't survive it. I've often noticed this bush here that I think it has like purple, really purple berries on it. At some point, what is that? That's the beauty berry, calicarpa, oh. it's called. And it, kind of like the porcelain vine, it has brightly colored berries that are uh, kind of a dark purple blue. And they're, they're, uh, they'll stay there until we get snow. Oh. If we get snow, birds strip them right away. But oh. until that time, they stay on them. Hmm. So they, I guess they're a last choice for the birds. Oh, funny. You want to talk, talk about the plumbago too? Um, I can. What is that? Unfortunately, not uh, not a little too early in the yet. season for the plumbago. Like a, sounds like a disease. <laughs> like plumbago. Oh no. A little later, uh, it's later in the summer to bloom, but it has, it's covered and covered in flowers, much like phlox flowers. Oh yeah. And they're a, a blue. Oh. And uh, again, it's not uh, winter hardy. Mm. So it goes in the greenhouse in the winter. Right. That's a big pot. You you must. <laughs> it keeps getting bigger. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, well, we, we, we have, have so much we work. I, I dolly we have to them keep around. Putting things in bigger pots. Yeah, every year when you're going to have to buy one of those <laughs> things I've seen that carries the pots with wheels. You know, you. We have a dolly. Around. You yeah. do. Oh, and we have okay. a wagon. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. <laughs> so, and there are other fuchsias just farther down there with the other red. Yeah, this oh. is uh, the the other Boliviensis oh, fuchsia. Yeah. Uh, usually, when they're hanging out like that, that's what the color is like. Wow. 
So Very it's looking. got lots and lots of new growth on it, and so a little later it'll be yeah. covering those dangly flowers as well. Huh? I love the hostas too. And the hostas, are, you know, this this patch has done exceedingly well. Uh, we haven't always done well with some of our others for some yeah. reason. I don't know why. You know, this here is a special bush, isn't it? Or it tree. is. Is that not from Australia? I'm sure I saw it there. <laughs> so. <laughs> This is a pineapple broom. Okay. So it's a member of the broom family. Uh -huh. It's finished flowering for the season, unfortunately, but when the flowers are out, they're like a, a, a stack of yellow, and it's heavily scented like pineapple. Is it still scented now? No, oh, unfortunately not. I won't stick my nose in it then. It's, uh, <laughs> it's past that season. It's a vigorous grower. It doesn't spread. It's never set seedlings. They're not an invasive species. Oh. Um, but they're in that family. Uh, we have to take a lot off of it and thin it out yeah. fairly often, because we have to let everybody have their room, Space. right? So it doesn't have a problem with the winters here, hey? No, not at all. Wow, that's, that's nope. amazing. Yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have planted it in a bigger space. Uh, oh well. But, I don't think it minds being cropped. It it's still doing all right. I thought right. it was going to be a small shrub. Yes, it looks more <laughs> like a tree, doesn't it? That's why I called it a bush. It's not really, is it? <laughs> no. And, and um, this looks kind of unusual. So, some of you recognize this. It's a close relative of our friendly arbutus trees. Oh. This also is an arbutus. Oh, really? This is a strawberry arbutus. So this is the Asian version oh. of the other side of the Pacific. So sometime a long time ago, they had a common ancestor, and when the ocean split apart, okay. we uh, or we ended up with uh, our own varieties on each side of the ocean. It's very pretty, and it doesn't have any trouble, obviously, with the winters here either. No, right? it's hardy too, and it's nice. not the right time of year because all the flowers are just opening up, and later it has large, bumpy, orange, orangey red fruit. Oh, so the flowers yeah. are done now, or the whole thing? No, is done? they're, uh, they're just, not just coming yet. out. Right? Oh, okay. All these are about to open. Nice. And uh, they're not, they're like arbutus flowers or, or blueberry, they're all in the same family. There's, okay. there's little, and heathers, little. all those little bells. So it's the same kind of flower. Oh, very nice. It is nice. And we, it's been growing really vigorously as it gets older, it grows more rapidly. And so I regularly take branches off of it. Yeah. Otherwise, it needs a much bigger space too. Right. Now, what's happening with this? Because that looks like an alder, and I know you would not be growing an alder. No, I like alders, but this is yeah. not. This is a, a, a sorbus. Um, it's kind of a, a willow, if you want to, if you believe it or not. Hmm. And we kind of like it because of the contrast with yeah. the underside of the leaves. And it's a little bonsai-like, just the shape oh, of it. I see. Yeah. It's fairly slow growing. Uh, it does something wants to eat it a little bit in the spring, but. Uh, it seems to bounce back from that. Nice. And this is a special kind of hydrangea, isn't it? It is, and I can't remember the variety. I bought it at a grocery store, Thrifty's, I think. Wow, really? But it wasn't this color. It was, uh, it was what color was it, Susan? It was... Well, it was, it was the cream, but it had some blush pink accents on the edges of the petals, which mm. we haven't been able to replicate here. Gotta throw some nails under there or something. So, yeah. yeah. It's hydrangea. still pretty though. No, it is. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And your blueberries are doing well? Yeah. Yeah, Susan ate a bunch of them today. Yeah. Good work. That's a really good blueberry bush. I don't know what kind it is, but it's a good one. <laughs> All right. And many things like that Arbutus and this lilac and a few others around here volunteered yeah. themselves. Uh, I like volunteers. So, uh, yeah, if and, they're uh, good, they're good. And I like your dogwood too, and I guess we just missed that, because those usually happen in May, don't they? So we've got two dogwoods. Oh yeah? This one is our provincial flower, the Pacific dogwood, and I got it from a property nearby when it was just a little sapling, where mm -hmm. there's a ground littered with them, and the owner said, there's too many, come and take one, and I was only happy to do that. Yeah. And it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, taken off. It took quite a few years before it started. It was old enough to bloom. Mm -hmm. But this is the first year it really had quite a few blooms on it. So it's, uh, it's doing well alongside other native plants like the arbutus and the cedars. Yeah. And uh, Got a gary oak so it does tree well. here too, I guess. And a gary oak, yes. So that, yeah. That's just outside. So that's just kind of our na native corner. Right. And there's 
Oh yes, you've uh, got some salmon berries. Yeah. Some salmon they berries, are and there's well. uh, 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 what do you call them? Uh, the white berries. Snow berries. Snow berries. berries. Thank you. In there as well. We have to actually keep on top of those because they're pretty prolific. Those can't be Oregon grape because those look like palm trees. Well, they're in that family. So this isn't our native Oregon grape, but it is in the same family. Ah. It's uh, it grows tall. Unfortunately, it's finished its flowering and it flowers in the winter really, and then has clusters of blue berries, which are all. The last few ones are kind of dried up now. But, yeah, I can see them. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's the same same group. It's um, huge. That's just yeah. too cool. I want one of those because it does look like a palm tree. It's <laughs> kind of leaning out because it's in the shade of the cedars. Yeah. And I have to keep limbing up the cedars to get more light into them. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is a vine maple, oh. which we don't see a lot of here on the island, more on the on the mainland. Mm -hmm. But I got it quite a few years ago. Is that a native one as well? It Tom? is. It is. Yeah. Wow. But look how far this branch has gone out here. That's how oh, they yeah. grow. That's crazy. That's how vine maples grow. They grow up and sprawl. They don't grow like a tree. Mm -hmm. They kind of. They're usually in the understory, and they. I used to see them in North Vancouver up in Lynn Canyon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That area growing wild. But we have uh, um, all kinds of things in here that are looking at. Well, the we have most a lot prominent. of rhodos all along the bank here that most of them were here no, well no I would maybe say half were here were. we've put in some some specimens so in the spring it's really pretty along here because yeah. we've got all the rhodos and azaleas and azaleas yeah nice yeah and uh anyway but it keeps changing because as things grow up it changes the environment right so a lot of these rhodos used to be more exposed now they're getting quite shady and getting a little bit leggy because of it right well this yeah. was all open when we bought the house too yeah, the whole like yard this was. was so we've planted it a lot yeah so this is a korean dogwood and it was here already when we bought the house 23 years ago it's grown a lot it's not a super fast grower but it uh it's about cornus cusa, cornus cusa. Uh, yeah so when it flowers, it flowers about two months later than the native one. So we get two, two uh, circuits of flowers. Nice. And uh, for many years, we noticed that one year would be just completely covered in flowers, and then the next year would have only a few. It's kind of thrown that system out the last couple of years. We haven't had spectacular flowering the last couple of years. Maybe next year. Yeah. I don't know what really triggers it to do that when it does. It's like it did all right. It's got a number yeah. of It wasn't a bad year, but it wasn't yeah. a spectacular year. Yeah. Yeah. Because when it's a spectacular year, it's just nothing but flowers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice. Anyway, it's an impressive tree. Yeah. So the Desert King is ready earlier. And so we are always in competition with the raccoons, the starlings. What the rats. Else? Yeah, the rats. So we, we share our produce. <laughs> and then this one is later, Desert King. No, that's and the brown this turkey is a brown over there. Or brown yeah. turkey, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, so we, we get a lot of figs, so you know, we can yeah. give a lot of a lot away and what I've been doing with the uh, clematis below is I'm trying to layer them through the, the trees. So we just had a, actually a big bloom on this clematis here, so there's purple flowers all throughout the branches. Nice. So I'm kind of experimenting with layering plants just to get a different effect instead of just always using trellises trying to use the mm -hmm. structure of the plants that are there already. Do you think that'll slow the raccoons down? You know I was worried about the raccoons wrecking the clematis but they haven't they so haven't. They, it's, they seem to be able to well, get up of course, there anyway. It hasn't really been not ripened yet. Yeah. No. There's time. <laughs> no. <laughs> Those raccoons. Yeah. Cool. And oh, that's my. Janus Bay tree. Yeah that's Janus Bay. The, your little bay oh, tree that you oh gave me? Oh my god, really? Yeah. It's taller than me. Yeah. And you use it, I hope. Hey? Okay? Yeah, occasionally. Out, occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. And we've got a witch hazel oh. kind of hidden in the back here. That Shall we go to the back? This one right, right sort of behind the fig. Okay, so in behind the fig tree is a witch hazel, which is unusual because it blooms in winter. Yeah, particularly about November. Yeah, we, around we November, it it's, it's easy to miss it, but they're kind of very delicate 
yellow kind of like tattered little frilly flowers. yeah they're very unusual flowers they're right against the, the stems yeah so that's a winter a winter flower and we've got uh well this this actually is an interesting one because we before we knew we were going to move from calgary i bought the star jasmine just as a seasonal plant because it's not hardy in much canada at least not especially not in calgary so that we'll have it for a seasonal plant and maybe try to overwinter in the house or not and then we end up moving out here so it was the one plant we brought with us ah very good so it's been here ever since yeah. and it's it smells very bit. nice yeah. it does and we have many many clematis oh, so good. these are a butylon is a genus they're flowering maples oh. they're not a maple as janet mentioned they're a relative of hibiscuses so they're borderline hardy i don't I find I have success with them outside in the winter, so I don't treat them that way. Uh -huh. Maybe if I had a really protected site, but some of them are harder to come by than others, this one in particular, so I'm looking after that one. Treating it with kid gloves. Yeah. And then we ended up with, uh, like I said, quite a few fuchsias here. Uh, many of them, like this one, are not winter hardy, and it's only just starting to flower, so I can't show you that much right now. But uh, it's one of the ones that goes inside in the winter. Right. And we ended up with quite a few uh, geraniums that we didn't plan to, and this is one of them here. And there was a person who had a large collection and uh, ended up, uh, I think, uh, either passing away or getting too old and just let his whole collection go. And so it got distributed to a number of people. And, Me well, included, I wasn't, and I love them. Including you. Yes, and love well, geraniums. I wasn't looking for a lot more of them. We ended up with quite a few. Yeah. Now that's a pretty but they're one. unusual ones. And what the heck is this? That so that is an cool aloe. Too. Oh. One of the aloes. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, it's just about to open up, actually. Yeah. So we'll start to see that in the next few days. Right. And uh, But yeah, it's, it's many, many aloes, and that's one of them. And is that a spirea? That is. I can't remember I've the species. Because I bought one, and it's kind of got a bright... I don't know, fuchsia colored, and I've noticed now, I notice them, obviously, just like when you buy a car, you see the same car everywhere. These come in this color, and they come in a lot of colors. There's don't many they? species. Lots of spireas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bridal wreath spirea is one we don't have, but it's has cascades of white Ooh. flowers. Uh -huh. um, it's a nice one, and we have a, a golden spirea down another part of the yard. Um, they're one of the ones that are really quite hardy, yeah. even even out in Alberta. That's good. Well, this one, oh. I bought it because it said that it was a new variety. It wasn't supposed to drop seeds, and it was supposed to be deer resistant, and then promptly two days, nights later, a deer came along and had a little munch. <laughs> no such so, thing. I know. So it's got a fence around it because no one's touching my <clears> new <throat> plant. Yeah. No, it's very nice. We'll start with this giant wisteria that was here when we bought the house over 20 years ago and so it goes all the way up here and then we have another branch that goes along here. John built a, a cable system to suspend the wisteria out from the actual roof because it's so vigorous. It can really do a lot of damage if you're not careful so uh, we have to keep on top of pruning it and I, I cut it back frequently so I think this is my third bloom this year on it. Wow. We often get three to four blooms a season. So, because I'm constantly chopping it, chopping it down because it's so That's vigorous. The secret with wisteria, you just keep pruning them through the yeah. season. Huh. It's outstanding. And, and what is this in here with the little blue flowers on it? This is in the Datura family. It's a Iochroma, or purple uh, no, angel trumpet. No, blue, blue angel, angel trumpet, trumpet. Uh -huh. and it's from Argentina. <laughs> oh, okay. I was telling people it was from Australia for many years, and I just found out I was wrong. I remember this story. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it didn't die back this winter, so it started leafing out right from where it left off last summer. It's and a borderline hardy. Yeah, it, it, it likes it here. It's not too wet, I think. Um... And the hummingbirds love it. Like that. So, we Very have nice. yeah we have the Montana clematis. clematis here, and so it's beautiful. We've got the evergreen. And a, and a couple of other clematis. Yeah, in here we too. have this is 
it's not very colorful right now, but in the spring it's it's very. very that colorful. and this are all, all, all covered, back. and back yeah. here. Yeah. It's solid, solid pinks. Beautiful. And this, uh, um, this is mentioning the uh, blue trumpet, angel's trumpet. There's a white one that hasn't flowered yet this season, oh. but it still likely will. I can't see it, but I believe you. It's this one in here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there's my favorite anemone. That's from you. Yeah, my mom's an enemy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, came from yeah. her garden. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And these, I, I might add, I haven't seen them this year, but I keep switching these over every year. Uh, I receive, and you often see them, although not this year, in nurseries as uh, bedding plants just mm -hmm. for the season. But I find uh, if I overwinter them in the greenhouse, uh, that I get a big head start on them. And so by the end of the season, they're big. Wow, is it flower? Luxuriant. Not so much flowers. No, but it's, the, the, it's just the foliage is really pretty. Like there's another one over there. Oh, yeah. That'll be two, three feet tall. So. Uh, but you don't get that out of a start. No. Yeah. And this year, I just didn't see them anywhere. Huh. Yeah. But, so well, I'm glad I, I over overwintered them. Yeah, good work. So Dan's referring to Budlia, a butterfly bush. And what she's referring to is them being invasive. And like many plants, it's a matter of location, location, location. We have many species and varieties here. Never once had a seedling. This one right here, however, was one I dug up from a construction site behind the Crystal Garden how long ago? 14, 15 years ago? Wow. One of three that self-seeded in a clay pit. But in this yard that's all luxuriant and well you know, looked after, never found a seedling yet. Do you think Never. that might be a different variety than this one, and this one is invasive and this isn't? Uh, not necessarily, because this no. one's never produced a seedling No, we don't, we don't have no, a problem with them growing. Because they're outlawed in Britain. Some, they're everywhere. There. Some plants do well, and I, I, I would say I'd point to, uh, what is it, uh, uh, at the side of the road, uh, the purple ones. Uh, the, not chicory, are they? There is chicory. It goes yeah. along the yeah. roadsides. Purple. There's a yeah. lot of things that grow well in terrible conditions, yeah. but don't grow well in good conditions. And this is one of them. Uh -huh. So if you make the conditions too good, they won't like they it. They won't do it. Okay, yeah. that's good. But no, we've never had a problem with them. We have, we have a lot of butterflies. Never had a single seedling. Okay. And the butterflies love them. Oh, I bet they do. They are very and pretty. And the hummingbirds. Yeah. yeah. These two bushes are just full of butterflies. In we the actually summer. lost one here over the winter. Uh, that was had a, a kind of fancy one. Had a silvery, silvery gray leaves. Mm. So we can see the fence better. But uh, and your clematis there. <laughs> but uh, it was a kind of cool one. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. And do you want to talk about the groovy seventies, Bud Leah? You see those little domey flowers they're bright orange and so they're very distinctive but this bush is absolutely covered in bees the bees love this bush probably one of their favorites so it's kind of a not a popular garden color sometimes but it's uh it's a very groovy orange uh flower a groovy orange disco ball bush. Yeah, so I call it the <laughs> 70s Budleya bush. I bet it looks great next to this purple smoke bush, yeah. eh? Yeah. yeah. What's this, Susan? This is a type of clematis. Oh, really? It's more of a shrub variety, not such a climber. What's it called, John? I can't remember the variety, but it's it, got a different type of flower. It's very unusual. It dies to the ground in the winter. Yeah, it grows up from the bottom every year. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's pretty reliable. Yeah. Anyway. That's pretty neat. Okay. The Forsythia. Yeah, that's crazy. But oh yeah, I've we, got one either. We've cut hard. <laughs> Especially this year. I can't believe it's come back I think so they much. enjoy that. Yeah. You know, you cut them hard and they just go Whoa! Yeah. And our oh, rain barrel. That's a beauty. And yeah. That's one of our clematis seedlings. It's self-seeded. Very nice. But yeah. the, ra the rain barrel, um, the only problem with our climate is that when we get the rain, we don't need the rain barrel. <laughs> yeah. And the summer when we need the rain barrel, we don't get the rain to fill the rain barrel. Yeah. So that's the, the failing of rain barrels in our climate. Mm -hmm. But it still helps, and what the yeah. heck, and uh, 
And uh, yeah, this one has a planter on the top, so it's uh, kind of nice. But we have to still water the top because <laughs> it dries out if we don't remember about it. Yeah. Is that poor chalacus you got in there? There, yeah, yeah. I like those. They don't take a lot of water, do they? No. No. No, no very, I think uh, I'm going to grow somewhere. I've got a scorching thing happening and nothing grows. I think I'm going to try. My mom liked these, and I think that's why. Because you didn't have to water them a lot, and they're yeah, very, they're, very they're vibrant. Pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So these are coal frames, and I have uh, crystal lights in the bottom for when we need them. Here are our baby um, uh, ever, our hardy mandevillas. Oh, really? Um, they had more than that. I've given them away. Yep. These are uh, a tomato relative. <laughs> Susan calls them the uh, rotten island rotten plant. island plants. Looks like a bed of nails. <laughs> they're not as nasty as they look. Torture plant. But they're they're Ooh. tomato relative. Really. And you'll, I see just, a, you'll see a better specimen in the front. Oh, yeah? Well, these oh, are the yeah. babies. That's really cool. I like that. Um, baby columbines. Yeah. Baby okay. lupins. And then at the next one, there's uh, a few other things. And early in the season, I, I use them to start oh, yeah. a lot of things. These are some hollyhocks in here, some baby hollyhocks, and some uh, tall blue nicotiana. And those are some more of those little uh, rotten island plants. I like how you've got a label, but it says nothing. It used to. The, the ink faded, oh, okay. unfortunately. <laughs> Note to self. Yes. Get, get ink that doesn't. Yeah, I know that And happened. those are uh, four o'clocks. Now, what the heck is a four o'clock? Well, uh, uh, we've got one in the front behind the cactuses that has yellow flowers, but I want to grow some of these and see if I can get some different colors because ah. they're different color varieties. Neat. But they have a tuber like a dahlia, but they're hardy. Mm. So... Uh, they die to the ground and come up every year. Oh, that's cool. And other than that, there's just some little uh, divisions of succulents, things like that, nice. at the moment. But, uh, yeah. Uh, so I can lower these down in the winter mm -hmm. and uh, leave them up there now. Nice. So that's what that's Love for. Love that. And I like the paint job on here, too. That's very cool. Did you do that, Susan? No, I didn't. He did that. <laughs> okay. So this is just my little kind of cutting garden, and I've got some vegetables mixed in. We've got some beans here and uh, we've got glads and gerberas and zinnias and cosmos and um, sunflowers. Sunflowers, which I didn't know I was even planting. The squirrels probably helped you out there. Uh, well, I just, John had <laughs> se John nope. seeded most of this, so um, I didn't, they've all grown from uh, little, you, you little You thought plants. they were zinnias. I did. I thought they were <laughs> when zinnias. They were little. What the heck's that? It looks like you're growing yams, or is that some kind of morning glory or something you've got happening there? Morning glories. Morning glories. But a, like a deep purple one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's actually finished there. It's a beautiful, ah. deep color. And the Gerberas are hardy. Yeah. <coughs> I've never had those before, so. Yeah. That's neat. And it looks like you're going to have a fair crop of grapes. Yeah. Ours are doing quite well as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And there's Oliver, right on cue. Hello, kitty kitty. You might as well talk about that now, don't you? Sure. And this is kind of cool because this is what John's business is. It's called Catscape. Please look it up. And thank you so much for keeping cats out of my garden <laughs> and keeping them, you know, away from all the songbirds. And here's uh, the star of the show, here's Oliver. Here's Oliver. And he can come out of his house and come and cruise through all of these tunnels. And he has his own little private garden in here. And he's safe from raccoons and whatever else. and Cat fights. And cat fights and everything else. So he still gets to go outside. And he gets to look at all these lovely pears. So you've got a nice crop of pears here and apples. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. these are old apple trees and old pear trees. That yeah. Probably more than, well more than 60 years old. Amazing. Well, you keep them well pruned and they seem to do well every year, you know. Yeah, they, they take a lot of work, actually. <laughs> yeah. I know, pruning yeah. is bad, bad news. I know Al complains about it. We had someone else do it this year, and we actually got some fruits, so there you go. So this is something of interest. This is a climbing hydrangea ah. over here on the, on the left. That one? And what's this nice about one. it is that it, um, it grows it's on the full north finished, side. But, ah. And uh, uh, so if you've got shady spots and not a lot grows, it's a good one. The downside of it, it clings like ivy does. Oh. Okay. So you have to be on top of that. Um, or if you have the right spot. Or not care about if it. Yeah, if, it, if you don't care, yeah. yeah. It kind of looks like a, 
uh, lace hydrangea. It does. It? Yeah. 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 Mop, a mop head type. Yeah. 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 Very delicate looking. Is that a hydrangea as well, this vine you have here? So this is interesting. This is Chilean firecracker vine, oh. a cremocarpus, hmm. and it is sold in seed packs. And everything you read about it says they need full north or south sun, mm -hmm. full exposure to sun, and they're not hardy. Uh -huh. Well, these have been here for many, many years on the full north side, and they even bloom in the winter. Wow. And so, the hummingbirds love them. There's not a lot of flowers on it right now, but oftentimes it's covered between yellow, orange, and red flowers. The whole thing is right. just covered. Mm -hmm. So we've had to cut back a lot because we raised the, the sunroom a little bit, right. but it's coming on strong again. You can whack it back a lot and it'll, it'll grow back. Nice. So order those seeds because it does well. Well, <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> believe everything anyway. you read, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beautiful pots along here, and now they're not getting drowned, hey? This since is, you've got yeah. your lovely gutter This is foot Susan's, up. Susan's handiwork. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love seeing the hummingbirds come to the fuchsias and... and uh, What's this here? Loaf of spermum, one of the o most overlooked <laughs> most overlooked plants. That's something. And uh, it is something, and uh, yeah. especially when you have a big basket full of them. Oh, man. And. Uh, just a lot of people don't know about them. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then I found them a number of years ago, and I found very few of them, so then I overwintered them. Mm -hmm. But then they started to show up a couple of years ago, so I didn't bother overwintering them, and then they disappeared again. So then I thought, oh, I'm going to have to overwinter them. And so I did overwinter this last winter, and then I found a few this year. Uh -huh. But they're not, still not that common to come across. Well, if you but put it upright, it looks like a gladiola. It does. You know? But uh, you can see it's just nothing but flowers coming yeah. on it. Yeah. Wow. So Does it come in different colors? Uh, white ones as well. White, white and this lovely purple. Well, that's yeah. beautiful. So these are uh, uh, like the cactus. These are all uh, not winter hardy. Well, I shouldn't say a couple of them are winter hardy, but most of them are not. So they go into the greenhouse or in the sunroom all winter. But they're all aloes, such as these ones, or agaves, like these ones back here. Um, they're wicked though because those little points on them, I usually use nail clippers and tip them, so yeah. I've got to catch up on them a bit. But they're oh. uh, nice plants, but they, uh, yeah, so be wary. <laughs> They'll go right in uh, without an effort. But uh, it looks innocuous, but it's the most dangerous thing because uh, not so much the big spines, but the little glockids, uh, the little tiny spines on all cactus. Yeah. Little tiny ones that you don't pay much attention to. Those are the ones that get you and they remind you forever because they get in your soft places and you can't see them, but they're up. there. And uh, I'd rather have a big spine that I can pull out than mm. all those little glockids. This is, eventually what we'll do is we'll actually build this up properly and make a proper display place over them. But well, it looks pretty darn good to me, <laughs> John. That's pretty spectacular. I think this one's my favorite just because it looks like a lotus flower. It does. It does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of different ones, and mm -hmm. uh, a few cactus pads that have seeded, and and some. Um, yes, what you doing there? Grow, uh, growing some, uh, hopefully succeeding with some. Uh, oh, camellia cuttings. Oh. A, kind of a, a different camellia that I don't see often. So hopefully they'll uh, they'll succeed. Neat. And this looks like. Um, isn't this the bottle plant? It's a that's a type of cactus. Oh. It's, it's not. The one you're referring to is over here, the, the ah. Drunkard's Dream bottle, bottle cactus. And you have a pickle plant. Well, it's actually, uh, um, I got that this year. It's a, uh, uh, oh, what's it called? It's, it's a long grow outside here. Okay, that one well, maybe doesn't, but. Well, I got one similar from Ed's wife, and she said it was called a pickle plant. So. Well, there are some that are called that. Um, there you go. It's very cute. It comes out with little white flowers that open and close in the day. It hasn't, I don't know. It hasn't done that for us oh, yet, okay. so I don't well, know. Must, maybe it's a different, a different thing. So, Susan, this is your area where you grow things that, to eat and uh, where you grow things that people push on you to grow? Exactly. <laughs> We've grown tomatoes for many years, and we are pretty good at that, but Janet's been trying to get me to grow other things this year, and it's been mixed success. But... Uh, my lettuce has gone to seed, but I did have my barrel of lettuce, and uh, I've got strawberries and a squash and other lettuce, so that's about as far as I've got this year. My zucchini rotted, 
Oh, looked terrible. Tore it out last night. It had black aphids all over it. So that was a, that was not a success. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. But you know, next year if you you know play your cards right, maybe you'll have a <laughs> a raised bed where you can do some <laughs> some serious gardening. Yeah. So, but uh, anyway, you 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 always do well with your tomatoes, and they oh, always yeah. do well here. So, and that's pretty too. Whatever that is, is that a jack o' lantern? Uh, Japanese lantern. Japanese Chinese, lantern. Chinese. Yeah. Is this... it the whole thing is Japanese lantern? Because it looks like it's a different plant with the white flowers on there. Am I dreaming? They're in the tomato family too. Really? Um, Florists grow these a lot, and because the, they've got the orange. Uh, yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah, but they can be invasive, so that's why we've kept it uh, in a pot. But in the fall, I cut them and put them, bring them in the house for arrangements. And so they'll be orange all the way up. Yeah. Ah, uh, very pretty. Great for the fall. Yeah, mm -hmm. very nice. Everything so else. we've got uh, one, two, three, four cannas that will get bigger and bigger throughout the summer. We used to have them all kind of side by side up here by the the tap, and I thought, no, I want the color. So John unfortunately has to pop them into the garden because they're quite large. That is a big pot. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. Now, I should also point out that uh, although they're not flowering yet, we have a lot of hardy hibiscus, a few different colors, and lots of babies. Uh, they're producing their own colors. So once they flower, we'll tag them and know what we've got. Um, yeah, I really think that this this and this this is the, the most interesting thing you've got here because it looks like, you know, there's two different plants there with the different colored leaves and the two different colors and the, the flowers. That's... I've never seen one like that. Spectacular. It is. It must be rare. And and tell us about this, Susan. Well, this this is the the big. This is the mother plant of what I call the rotten island plant, which is a solanum. Yeah. So it's related to a tomato. It's uh, like the potato vine. It's the all the same family. The bed it's of nails same, plant. Same, <laughs> you've got the same flowers as the potato vine up there. Oh, but okay. It's kind of interesting. It's. Uh, a conversation piece. I'll say. And if it's you ever really read your kids the book Rotten Island, you'll know why I call it the Rotten Island plant. I have not. I'll have to look <laughs> it up. <laughs> and there's some hardy, more hardy fuchsias. Hardy fuchsias? Yeah. Well, Susan and John, you know I love your garden and lots of people do. You really do put a lot of work into it and it shows because it is, it, it is really spectacular at any time of year whenever you come by. So thank you so much for taking the time. I know that you're very busy, John. And I know you are too, my dear, and we really appreciate, appreciate you taking the time to show it to us. And uh, let's go to my place and have some pie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Looking Thanks, forward everybody. To it. Thanks, Thanks for visiting. watching. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. likes to have different versions of the same plant in different colors and then I have to figure out how to use them and plant them and that's another another beautiful one you just found another that beautiful one. one well that's weird you had to have it I know yeah because it's variegated right so you didn't have one of those so you've got to have at least two yeah. so you still have some more to collect oh wait a minute he's getting another he's pot another one. he's got another one bravo I hear from Susan is, oh yeah, you know, I don't have a husband who watches sports white or goes out drinking with the boys, but he comes home with plants every day, and I don't know where I'm going to put them at, oh my god! Could be I worse. think it's pretty nice, yeah, I think it's pretty nice, and he does listen to you, like, you know, can well, you put this over here and dig a hole for that and put that over, yeah. you know, he takes direction, it's all good. So all the, are albutalons? Albutalons, but yeah, all of them you have to take in? Uh, I do. Every single one? Yeah, I mean, like I say, they're kind of borderline hardy, but I don't want to chance them. We have wintered them well, over one year, but they kind of struggled. Yeah. So, to, to be honest, why he has the cold frames is because we used to have the greenhouse to start things in, but now he has so many plants that it's <laughs> overwinter. That it's just... The greenhouse yeah. isn't big enough. Jam-packed. You need another greenhouse just like me. So. You need a greenhouse.
house right in the middle of your front yard. That's what's next. We'll help you put it together. We're pros now.